Chapter 601, adding oil to the fire, the young nobleman surrounding Tang Wuling quickly moved out of the way, turning to the voice, Tang Wuling was met with the approaching figures of the emperor and empress, what is your name? Dai Tianling asked, sizing Tang Wuling up. During the ceremony prior, Dai Tianling had been too far to get a good look at Tang Wuling. Now that they were only meters apart, he could see Tang Wuling for the tall and handsome young man he was. Tang Wuling's sunny aura, large eyes, and long eyelashes made him easy to like. Even women would be jealous of his pretty eyes. Tang Wuling bowed. Greetings, your majesty. My name is Tang Wuling. Dai Tianling smiled. I look forward to your performance in the continent young elite's tournament. He gave Tang Wuling a curt nod, then turned and left. Tang Wuling stared at the retreating broadback, eyes bulging. Aren't you just pouring oil on the fire now? The surrounding noblemen stared at Tang Wuling, their bloodlust having grown all the more thick. But due to the emperor's attitude to the matter, they dared not act against Tang Wuling there. Is this what they call an absurd calamity? God damn it. Tang Wuling didn't know whether to laugh or cry. Is there no way out of this? Fuck it. I'll just not join the tournament. Good luck. Turning to the voice, Tang Wuling saw Elder Kai walk past him, patting him on the shoulder. Can I just not participate? Tang Wuling asked, forcing out a smile. You can. Elder Kai paused, staring Tang Wuling right in the eye. But let me remind you, this trick isn't merely a diplomatic exchange. This is also a trial for you kids. It's a trial to see who is worthy of joining the next generation of the Shrek 7 monsters and entering the Inner Court. If you avoid this battle, then you will lose the qualifications to enter the Inner Court. Tang Wuling's interest was piqued. For a student of Shrek Academy, joining the Inner Court and the Shrek 7 monsters was the most attractive opportunity possible. Furthermore, the tournament's rewards are very generous. First place in the one-on-one -on -one tournament wins a soul bone. Elder Kai said, a soul bone. Tang Wuling's eyes went wide. Since he possessed the right hand soul bone in the spirit ascension platform, he was well aware of how powerful soul bones were. His golden dragon dreadclaw was a trump card that had saved him on countless occasions already. Not only would obtaining another soul bone increase his strength by leaps and bounds, it would even benefit his body. It would make breaking the next seal on the golden dragon king a shade easier and bypass the need for spirit items. He would save boatloads of money. Screw it. I gotta win that spirit bone. I didn't promise to be her boyfriend, and she was just pranking me anyway. Hee <laughs> hee. Let's see how you squirm if I really do become the champion. Tang Wuling clenched his fists with resolve. Boss, you're so damn cool. You just casually picked up a princess. She she exclaimed in admiration as he walked over and swung an arm around Tang Wuling's shoulders. Get away from me, Tang Wuling said, gloomy and annoyed. How could you do this to Yue? Yuan and Yue earnestly said, yeah. You're acting improperly. A man needs to be responsible and single-minded. Yue's Heng Yu chimed in. Tang Wuling felt the urge to punch Yue's Heng Yu's smug and handsome face. The guy who bought an entire drink shop just for a girl's number is lecturing me. Who the hell are you to talk? Shu Lizzy also joined in on the fun. Captain, good luck. What the hell do you mean by good luck? Tang Wuling glowered. I never thought you would be such a player. Yu Zingguan looked at Tang Wuling, eyes dripping with disdain. Tang Wuling stared at them. I'm only 15. I'm not with Gu Yue or anything. How am I a player? I just want to study and work hard. Is that so wrong? Damn it. Throughout the return to their hotel, Tang Wuling was in a dull mood. I can't believe my luck is so shit. What kind of princess is she supposed to be? All she does is give me trouble. Down in the dumps, Tang Wuling groaned in his heart. Screw it all. I'll just go become the champion. Let's see how that damn princess screws with me then. Just as Tang Wuling had resolved himself, he arrived in front of Gu Yue's room and knocked on her door. No response came. Gu Yue, don't misunderstand. That princess said that out loud on purpose to screw with me. Once again, he knocked on her door. The door flew open. A thrust of a hand, and Gu Yue dragged him inside by the collar. She regarded him with a mask of calm as she took a seat on the sofa. A few strides later, Tang Wuling stood before a seat beside her. But before he could sit down, he caught sight of her glare. Left with no other choice, he stood there in embarrassment as he explained the true events between him and the princess. Serves you right, Gu Yue said after listening to his explanation. Her expression a bit more relaxed than before. What a manly man you are, though. Getting revenge on her, huh? You caused this yourself. Just fit the tournament. But Elder Kai said that if I don't compete, then I can't make it into the inner court. The first place award is a soul bone too. At the mention of a soul bone, Gu Yue's eyes went wide, a chilling glint upon them. Tang Wuling said, "Soul bones are super useful. I got my golden dragon dreadclaw from a right hand soul bone. If I can get another one, fine." If you want to compete, then compete. You can leave now. Gu Yue abruptly rose to her feet and pushed Tang Wuling out the door. It slammed shut behind him. Tang Wuling stared dumbstruck at the closed door. What's with her now? Did I not explain clearly enough? Inside her room, Gu Yue leaned against the door. Her eyes were sharp and cold as she muttered to herself. Soul Bone. The Continental Young Elites Tournament was one of the largest tournaments on the continent and drew in spectators from all over. It had a long history. So long, in fact, that it could be traced back to when the Star Luo Empire was still on the continent of Duo. It could be traced back to the distant past when Soul Masters was still the pinnacle and the Martial Soul Hall controlled the majority of Soul Masters. The tournament had been where the most outstanding talents were selected. Later on, a coalition of the year's three greatest empires led by Tang San overthrew the Martial Soul Hall, liberating the Soul Masters under its rule. Yet, years upon years later, this tournament still lived on. After the Sun Moon Federation fully occupied by Duo. The tournament finally faded from Duo. However, the Star Luo Empire stayed true to tradition and continued to host it. Every three years, the Continental Young Elite Tournament was held in Star Luo City. Any soul master under 20 years old could sign up. Naturally, there were other conditions required. Only those with at least a soul power of rank 20 and the ability to pay the registration fee were permitted to compete. The registration period was a full month. After countless years of cultural and technological advancement, the tournament now had competitions for one on one duels, two on two matches, seven man team battles, and mega challenges. That said, there were no competitions for crafting professions such as blacksmith or designers. This was purely a tournament to rouse the fighting spirit of the new generation. Anyone who achieved a good rank in the tournament would become a hot commodity. Whether they decided to pursue academics, corporate work, or even a military career, they would receive preferential treatment. Of all the competitions held in the tournament, the one on one duels the most popular. The jewels had no rules and any sort of weapons or equipment could be used. Mechas, soul devices, or even battle armor, none were barred. As long as the competitor had it, they could use it. As such, the jewels were undoubtedly the most intense. The Star Luo Empire had always idealized the lone hero. To its citizens, Tang Sect founder Tang San and Spirit Pagoda founder Hua Yuao were idols among idols. Through their own strength, they changed the course of history. They each possessed overwhelming strength that turned the tides of war's thought lost. In contrast, the people of Duluo and the Sun Moon Federation valued the strength of a team more. So team battles were the spotlight there. According to the registration lists, there were 5,163 people registered for the one on one jewels. Nearly all the competitors had opted for it. The two on two matches had 864 registered. The seven man team battles had a mere 113 teams competing. As for the mega battle, there were 461 competitors. Registration closed and the tournament would begin a day later. Fortunately for the students from Shrek Academy, they were able to bypass the registration lines and register through the Star Luo official in charge of registrations. However, not all of them had registered by their own will. Elder Kai had simply declared who would participate. Chapter 602 Promise. Apart from Shu Lizzy, all of the students from Shrek Academy were to participate in the one on one duels. They would form four teams for the two on twos, and Shu L
She she cast a furtive glance at Tang Wulin. If that's the case, this is Elder Kai. I'm sorry about this. I'll try to change her mind. Tang Wulin said, then rushed out after Gu Yue. Back in her room, Gu Yue stood in front of her window, silently staring out into the distance. The door to her room was left slightly open as if she had anticipated Tang Wulin coming after her. Through that open door, Tang Wulin entered, taking long strides to reach Gu Yue in an instant. Just what are you thinking? He demanded, "Why are you refusing to compete?" Gu Yue continued looking out the window. "Why do I have to compete? I know you're frustrated with me, but please stop using this event." Tang Wulin took her by the hand. "I'll go with you to explain things to Elder Kai. Then we can compete together. Or do you not actually want to enter the court to become one of the next Shrek Seven Monsters? Do you really think I could be one of the Shrek Seven Monsters?" Gu Yue said, turning to face Tang Wulin. "I'm a member of the Spirit Pagoda. Remember, Shrek doesn't have as harmonious of a relationship with Spirit Pagoda as you might think." "Well, I'm sure you didn't know that." Tang Wulin was taken aback. "You're choosing the Spirit Pagoda. I decided long ago, back when Elder Kai made things difficult for us." She answered, "The Spirit Pagoda has given me many things that Shrek cannot. It is impossible for me to become one of the Shrek Seven Monsters." Tang Wulin stared at her in disbelief, barely managing to blink his eyes a scant few times. This had completely blindsided him. Words formed at his lips, but they came out as incoherent stuttering. He wanted to argue. He really did, but he simply didn't know how he could persuade her. They had spent years with one another. He knew just how stubborn she could be, how stubborn she was. Once she came to a decision, it would take nothing short of a miracle to change her mind. Then Tang Wulin blurted, "Don't you want to be with me?" A shiver ran down Gu Yue's spine. A myriad of emotions flashing through her eyes. I am in cultivate. Tang Wulin sounded meekly. Don't you want to cultivate together with me? Gu Yue gazed at him, eyes ablaze. You really want me to compete? Of course. Tang Wulin nodded without hesitation. We're partners. Gu Yue narrowed her eyes. Fine. I'll compete in the two-on-two competition with you. That's it. I won't compete in the one-on-ones or the team battles. I won't be involved in them in any way. Joy and anxiety warred in Tang Wulin's heart. Sure, he was happy to fight alongside her in the two-on-two competition, but the rest of what she said drew a divide between her and the rest of the team, erected a barrier between them. He felt nothing but worry for what the future might bring. It was a feeling he hated. Gu Yue. Tang Wulin began. You can go now, she replied softly. I want some peace. All right, Tang Wulin eventually said. He knew it was impossible to control Gu Yue's mood, so he settled for what he got. She had agreed to fight alongside him in the two-on-two competition. Tang Wulin left Gu Yue's room. He didn't see her for the rest of the day. This left him in such low spirits that he ate half as much as usual for his meals. He wanted to go see Gu Yue once more, to try and convince her again, but he didn't even know what he would say. The next day, Continental Young Elite's tournament began, drawing competitors and spectators from all over the continent. The tournament was held in the Grand Star Louis Stadium. Due to the high number of competitors, all participants were separated into different groups for the preliminary contests. For the sake of speeding things along, the preliminary contests were instant eliminations. A single loss and they were eliminated from the tournament. Luck would undoubtedly play a major part in these opening rounds. However, luck was a part of someone's strength. Fair was subjective. Just as Elder Kai said before, absolute fairness did not exist in this world. If Tang Wulin wanted fairness to exist, if he wanted to create and control it, he had to rely on his own strength. The first preliminary matches to take place were for the one-on-one duels. This was the part of the tournament that everyone was couldn't wait to see. These were the matches that had the most at stake. Inside the Grand Star Louis Stadium, 50 stages were set up for the preliminary matches. Matches were to be held in a set order, with the next beginning as soon as the previous ended. They would cycle through each match until the preliminaries were finished. Every competitor was assigned an electronic number badge. The badge contains detailed information about the competitor and their match times. If they missed any of their matches, they would be instantly eliminated. The Continental Young Elite's tournament didn't start with an opening ceremony. There were simply too many competitors to hold one. As such, the ceremony was scheduled for after the preliminaries. The Grand Star Louis Stadium could accommodate 300,000 people. It was the largest stadium, not just in Star Louis City, but the entire continent. Furthermore, it was also equipped with the most cutting-edge technology. Tickets had been sold out long before the tournament began. Although the tickets were all sold out, there was also a continent-wide live broadcast. However, the broadcast was pay-per-view. Thanks to this, as well as the registration fee paid by thousands of competitors, the Star Louis Empire easily recouped the costs of hosting such a grand tournament. The Empire had long ago learned the best ways to squeeze all the profits from this tournament. Countless ordinary citizens yearned to be soul masters. Unfortunately, there was no overcoming what they were born with. For them, watching this tournament was the next best thing. For them, this was a festival. People all throughout the continent were giddy with excitement to witness the rise of the stars of the next generation. Thanks to the strings that had been pulled to register the Shrek Academy students, their matches were spread out over a few days. Tang Wulin drew number 333, an easy number to remember. One that bore no alumens. His match was on the first day. Interestingly enough, apart from Gu Yue who opted out of participating, everyone else's matches were on the second and third day. They were all staggered. Are you still upset I didn't participate? Gu Yue asked Tang Wulin. Tang Wulin shook his head. I'm not mad about it. I just feel like you're drifting further and further away. At this rate, it feels like you might leave us for good. I don't like that. Gu Yue stared at him. I'm sorry, but all good things must come to an end. No matter how much we try to fight it, we will have to grow up and one day part ways. Why do we have to part ways? Tang Wulin asked. Maybe. Gu Yue met his eyes for a moment. Then she looked away. Maybe we won't have to. We'll see. And besides, I'm going to compete with you later, but we can still cultivate together for many more years. Tang Wulin grumbled. Even if you're a member of the Spirit Pagoda, Shrek Academy is just a school. You can graduate, then you can go back to the Spirit Pagoda. A pang of pain flared up in Gu Yue's heart. She grabbed Tang Wulin's hand and squeezed it. I'll at least enter the inner court with you, all right? I promise. Tang Wulin blinked at her a few times, then burst with joy. You better keep that promise. Gu Yue nodded, a thin smile forming on her lips. Count on it. Chapter 603, Nine Ring Silverblade. Fantastic. Tang Wulin's exclamation drew gazes from their surroundings. Gu Yue's smile grew into a full-fledged grin. It wouldn't be a lie to say she loved the happy expression of his. The streets surrounding the stadium were packed with people, with many streets sealed off due to necessity. Gu Yue and Tang Wulin barely managed to enter the competitor's area after having their badges scanned. The moment they stepped foot into the stadium, the electric atmosphere came at them from all directions. The heated shouts of the spectators crashed upon his ears like raging waves, drowning out anything less than yelling right beside him. This was the cheering of 300,000 people. Numerous stages were set up within the stadium, each equipped with a special soul barrier to prevent the battles from affecting one another. When Tang Wulin first caught sight of these stages, his eyes shone with glee. The individual competition had no rules, and competitors were free to use whatever they had at their disposal. The competition required signing a death waiver after all. Although fatalities were rare, it was impossible for the referees to always intervene in time. This would be Tang Wulin's first time participating in such a competition. Very few competitors used megas for the preliminary rounds. Due to the fact that 50 arenas were set up in the stadium, each arena only amounted to about 50 meters in diameter. Maneuvering a mega in such limited space would prove difficult. However, Tang Wulin saw many people equipped with an assortment of soul devices. Those technological marvels were shiny gadgets in his eyes, utterly dazzling. Damn. I'm super pumped for this now. Gu Yue, are you sure you don't want to participate? Tang Wulin asked. She had registered long ago,
Time passed quickly and Tang Wuling's number was called up onto the stage. He waved to Gu Yue as he left for stage 33. As he climbed up, the coincidence of being competitor 333 on stage 33 made him feel lucky. Once he stood on stage, he was floored by the immense pressure of hundreds of thousands of gazers, all converging on him, a completely different feeling from when he was still waiting for his turn. The spotlight dazzled him, the crowd shouted with enthusiasm, their voices reverberating like a roaring wave. Even the most steadfast competitor would be swept up in the mood of the crowd, blood racing. Thousands of years ago, there was also a tournament like this on Duolo. Amidst the shouts of the crowd, a person climbed onto the side of the stage opposite of Tang Wuling. This was undoubtedly his opponent, competitor number 631. The opponent was a young man about 17 or 18 years old. He stood tall with a well proportioned build, his entire being exuded a steady aura. Tang Wuling had plenty of combat experience, so much so in fact, that he was immediately on alert and in combat mode the moment he saw his opponent. He could tell that his opponent would be a bit of trouble. From a viewing platform, two elderly men sat together discussing the matches. If anyone were to approach, they would discover that no sound escaped from the area around them. They were completely isolated from the outer world. What's these matches about to start? Old Lin, these are just the preliminaries. Why did you want to personally watch? You sure do care a lot about that precious disciple of yours. The thin elderly man on the left side teased. The person referred to as Old Lin was a tall elderly man. Face impassive, he answered in a deep voice. Even a lion needs to use all its strength to hunt a rabbit. Although these are the preliminaries, he might be unlucky enough to come across a powerful opponent. I also want to see for myself if he's taken my teachings to heart. He's 18 this year. It's his last chance to compete in the continent young elite tournament. He can't afford to lose. He just needs to at least make it into the quarterfinals. The thin elder smiled. Now aim for the low goal. Isn't what's he already a one word battle armor master? And with his five ring cultivation, it'll be hard to find an opponent that will give him trouble throughout the entire tournament. Maybe if it's one of the elites from Monster Academy, we could talk. But I don't think so. This match will finish in a flash. I bet waxy has got a good chance of making the top three. Old Lin said, I hope so. But I'm actually the most worried about the preliminaries. If he's unlucky, he could be in the same heat as the fledgling monsters from Monster Academy. He'll be in trouble if that happens. Since the preliminaries are instant elimination, he won't have another chance. Once again, a smile graced the thin elder's lips. Well, that's not happening this match at least. This baby faced kid is probably 15 at most. He's most likely here to see what it's like. We can start packing up our bags now. Old Lin nodded. Shimmering light climbs through the air as the barrier formed a dome over the stage. Since the matches were devoid of rules, the sole job of the referee was to declare the winner when the dust settled. An electronic voice sounded. First round of the elimination matches. Competitor 333 versus competitor 631. Prepare yourselves. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Begin. The instant the match began, Tang Wuling rushed his opponent. He didn't even release his martial soul yet. Competitor 631 was named Ling Waxi, and he hailed from an ancient sect. He was here to carve a name for himself at this tournament. In his previous participation at the age of 15, he ranked in the top 64. Since then, he had poured blood and sweat into cultivation so that he could achieve a better rank this time. When he saw that Tang Wuling had charged him without summoning his martial soul, Ling Waxi was taken aback. Did he forget his martial soul? The Continental Young Elite tournament was so large and placed so much pressure upon competitors that more than a few made glaring mistakes. Yet Ling Waxi didn't dare be careless. His eyes shone as five soul rings appeared around him, two yellow and three purple. The optimum configuration. His martial soul appeared simultaneously, like gathering to form a blade in his hand. The blade was about 1.3 meters long with nine rings. Both blade and rings made of a silver metal. His five soul rings flew into his blade, merging with its first five rings, changing their colors to match those of his soul rings. A tall martial soul. Tang Wuling's eyes narrowed. He could tell his opponent was powerful. The way the soul rings merged with the blade a testament to that. It looks like my luck's a bit bad this time. His first match and he must face a five ring soul king. Meanwhile, many of the other battles were only between two or three ring soul masters. Why am I the only one with a five ring opponent? Yet Tang Wuling could only push away the thoughts of complaint, focusing on rushing his opponent once more. Ling Waxi raised his nine ring silver blade at Tang Wuling, filled it with soul power. In a flash, he released a one meter long beam. Tang Wuling picked up speed and altered his path to evade the attack, but the beam adjusted its trajectory in pursuit of him. It was a soul skill that locked onto its target. Unable to dodge, Tang Wuling chose to stand his ground. He planted his feet into the floor for a moment and took a stance. He thrust out a punch. A white glow coated his knuckles. His punch on its way to collide with the Ling Waxi's attack. A martial soul was unnecessary. Using just his soul power was enough. Chapter 604. Fierce clash. Fist and blade being collided in a tumult of rushing wind. Tang Wuling managed to destroy the beam, but the force of the clash halted his charge. Pain seared his fist, but since the soul power of the mysterious heaven method cloaked his body, he was fortunately spared any real injury. This outcome surprised Tang Wuling, but it startled his opponent, Ling Waxi, even more. Ling Waxi couldn't believe that Tang Wuling was able to resist his blade beam using his body alone. Even if that was just his first soul skill, he was still a soul king. His first soul skill would still be extremely powerful. Yet Tang Wuling had punched it apart. Ling Waxi furrowed his brow in contemplation. Is this kid trying to die? Tang Wuling's eyes flashed golden, his body straightening as he stood taller than before. Two golden soul rings appeared around him. The first shone brightly and strength filled his body as his right arm swelled, transforming into a golden dragon claw. Instead of his martial soul, he chose the strength of his bloodline. Ling Waxi stared in shock. Are those two soul rings? He only has two. But wait, why are they golden? Even if the legends speak of golden soul rings, a two ring soul master shouldn't have them. The two elders who had come to watch Ling Waxi's match and were about to leave the viewing platform immediately sat back down. Their brows furrowed, all their attention focused on Tang Wuling. Tang Wuling stomped on the ground and exploded forth like violent lightning. Empowered by golden dragon body, his speed reached its maximum. He arrived in front of Ling Waxi in the blink of an eye, thrusting his claw at Ling Waxi's chest. The attack shone resplendently under the spotlights. Ling Waxi hastily sidestepped the attack and brandished his nine ring silver blade. Rings jingling from the movement, silver light bloomed forth and the blade struck the claw. A metallic screeching filled the air, and Ling Waxi was sent flying backward by Tang Wuling's claw. He slammed into the barrier that surrounded the two. His blade hummed loudly, a sound that resembled a wail of pain. While the soul barriers blocked out external noise, it still let noise from within League outside. The audience heard the wails of the blade clearly. This intense clash between these two competitors had every spectator in complete shock. Everyone took note of the five soul rings revolving around Ling Waxi, clearly indicating his status as a soul king. He was definitely one of the most notable competitors in the preliminaries, but even though he was a soul king, he had been sent crashing into the barrier. Did a gale blow him away? The audience couldn't fathom what they were witnessing. Then they shifted their attention to Tang Wuling and his pair of glittering golden rings. Ling Waxi was still reeling. His entire blade arm was numb and trembled from the force of the clash. It was only now that he understood how close his blade had come to breaking. Holy shit, that kid's strong. As an agility type, Ling Waxi possessed a respectable amount of physical strength. His cultivation was top tier, which resulted in a strong body. However, the power of Tang Wuling's golden dragon claw was absolutely tyrannical. It was magnitudes more than Ling Waxi could endure. If he hadn't let Tang Wuling strike send him flying, he wouldn't have come out of the clash intact. This realization struck him like a bolt of lightning. The instant Ling Waxi came to understand this, Tang Wuling exploded forth like a cannonball. He rushed forward to finish off his opponent, claws gleaming golden as he rapidly closed the
that Ling Waxi's soul skill had passed over his mind. Just as he regained himself, however, the blade beam was already too close to avoid. On instinct, he thrust his claw toward it, tracing the beam's trajectory. His claw shone brilliantly, the beam struck, scattering most of the beam's energy. Yet a fraction of the beam made it through his counteroffensive and struck his shoulder with a meaty flack. The force of the blow flung Tang Wuling spinning backward and hit the ground. He had lost all of his momentum. Ling Waxi's face lit up. He knew this was a cheap combo attack, but he hadn't expected it to be so effective. Cry of the Silver Rings was most effective the first time he used it on a target. After that, the target would be wary of it. When the target expected the attack, their mind steeled against it. Its efficacy plummeted. Tang Wuling got to his feet, and the two stared at each other. Tension filled the air between them. They were done probing each other and now knew how powerful their opponent was. Tang Wuling raised his left arm and rotated it, shrugging the pain from his shoulder. The blade beam had hurt, but still he was uninjured. The defensive power of Golden Dragon Body completely mitigated any lasting damage, especially since his body had been strengthened even further by the body's sex training. It would be no exaggeration to call his body a weapon in and of itself now. Without warning, Ling Watsi advanced with confident steps. He swung his blade to and fro, unleashing a storm of blade beams. The beams spread out around Tang Wuling until they formed a giant net, then converged on him with frightening speed. It was impossible to evade. Compared to the previous attack, these blade beams were far larger and sharper. They were clearly imbued with much more soul power. After their initial clash, Ling Watsi dared not underestimate Tang Wuling any longer. Tang Wuling stepped forward, a draconic roar booming from within him as his blood essence flowed in reverse. The roar reverberated throughout the arena, announcing Tang Wuling's tyrannical strength. He thrust both palms toward the sky and unleashed a gigantic phantom golden dragon head at the net of beams. The net collided with the phantom dragon head and rapidly disintegrated. The dragon head, however, showed no signs of weakening. In fact, it seemed to grow even more radiant as it devoured the blade beams. An instant later, the net of blade beams was no more. Golden dragon shocks the heavens tore through it all. A cold shiver ran down Ling Waxi's spine, an ill premonition rising within him. His opponent may have only had two soul rings, but their strength was far beyond that. Without hesitation, Ling Waxi used cry of the silver rings once more. Yet another metallic screech piercing the air. This soul skill could both disrupt and surprise opponents. Ling Waxi watched Tang Wuling closely and nearly smiled when Tang Wuling's face went blank for a moment. Unfortunately for him, Golden Dragon shocks the heavens did not weaken at all. It just continued to grow stronger. Golden Dragon shocks the heavens was no soul skill. It was a blood essence skill. The potent power of his reversed blood essence flow and divine bloodline erupted to form that phantom dragon head. Only Tang Wuling could stop it now. As long as he didn't consciously do that, it would continue to rampage, with or without his guidance. As the phantom golden dragon head reached him, Ling Waxi's face took on a great expression. He touched the tip of his blade with his left hand, pushed out its hilt with his other hand, holding the entirety of the weapon as a makeshift shield. Then his fourth soul ring lit up. On the viewing platform, the elder nodded in satisfaction when he saw his disciple using his fourth soul skill. Guard point stance. The elder was satisfied with his disciple's choice. However, it was too early for him to be satisfied. Boom. The dragon struck. The nine ring silver blade hummed violently as it shuddered before the phantom dragon head's might. Guard point stands held up against the phantom dragon head, but its second function, a counterattack did not activate. The dragon head continued forth, running into Ling Watsi and sending him flying once more in a spray of blood. At that moment, everyone watching held the same thoughts within their heads. Just who the hell is that kid with two golden soul rings? What is his martial soul? Chapter 605, Ultimate Combo. Apprehension gripped Ling Watsi. Guard point stance, which granted him momentary absolute defense and a mighty counterattack, was his most formidable defensive soul skill. In fact, it could be considered his most formidable soul skill, period. If used at the right time, it could instantly turn the tide of battle. However, the impact of the dragon head went far beyond his expectations. Even with his defenses reinforced to the peak, he was an ant before such overbearing force. Worst yet, the counterattack of guard point stance failed to activate. A blink, and the phantom dragon head slammed into him with the full force of a soul train. His organs pulsed, steaming with pain, as if they would rupture at any second. I don't have any other choice. Ling Waxi gritted his teeth, flying backward through the air. He thrust out both hands, releasing a series of lights from his bracelets. The lights fused together into a large mass, enveloping his body, manifesting as pieces shining silver armor. A silver aura had burst from his form the moment the armor appeared, allowing him to stabilize his posture in the air. One word battle armor, a full set of one word battle armor. The instant the silver light blossomed, Tang Wuling's stomach dropped. He was confident in his strength in defeating a four or five ring soul master, but that was only if they didn't have a full set of battle armor. In terms of power, a one word battle armor master was leagues ahead of their naked equivalent soul master. Tang Wuling was currently about as powerful as his England when she faced a one word battle armor master solo. Back then, she could barely force her opponent into a corner by risking it all and sacrificing herself. With this in mind, upon seeing Ling Waxi's one-way battle armor, Tang Wuling knew he couldn't give his opponent time to display the armor's full potential. Otherwise, he would have no hope of winning. Within Tang Wuling came a draconic roar. As Ling Waxi worked to regain his balance in the air, Tang Wuling shot up, brandishing his dragon claw. Five dark gold beams of light burst forward from a single slash, transforming into a gigantic claw to tear Ling Waxi apart. Although Ling Waxi currently had the protection of his battle armor, the previous shock of phantom dragon head did to his internal organs still remained. He sucked in a deep breath before the attack struck, drawing upon the power of his battle armor to prepare his counterattack. When the five dark gold beams arrived, he slashed his naked nine ring silver blade forward. It was too late for him to use a soul skill, especially with his internal soul power in chaos. A boom thundered through the arena. Gold and silver light clashed in a dazzling display. Golden dragon dread claw was undoubtedly Tang Wuling's current strongest attack. Its might instilled fear into its targets. This was the power of the soul bone of the infamous dust gold Dreadclaw Bear, further empowered and influenced by the golden dragon king's bloodline. The collision of the two attacks sent the slash of the nine ring silver blade rebounding. A grating screech as Ling Waxi blocked it with his blade. If not for his battle armor empowering it, the blade would have been torn to shreds that instant. Even the golden dragon Dreadclaw couldn't pierce through the battle armor's defenses. However, Ling Waxi was sent flying backward with deep caches in his armor. A solid thud as he slammed into the barrier. The impact sent ripples throughout the barrier and rattled Ling Waxi's brain into disorientation, and he rebounded off the surface. But Tang Wuling pressed his attack without pause. While Ling Waxi was still stunned, Tang Wuling bought his claw into a fist and rammed it into Ling Waxi's stomach. In an instant, Ling Waxi crashed into the barrier again. Thick and dark blue vines shot out, wrapping around Ling Waxi's ankles like shackles. As he bounced off the barrier once more, the vines tightened their grip and slammed him into the ground. Mercy a concept unknown. Tang Wuling continued his one-sided onslaught like a relentless demon. Once he landed on the ground, his body let out a draconic roar. He stomped his right leg, summoning eight phantom dragons to attack Ling Waxi. Collision, and Ling Waxi crashed into the ground, only to rebound upward. Then Tang Wuling followed up by thrusting his palms out, summoning a phantom golden dragon head. Golden dragon shocks the heavens. A mighty roar shook the arena. In the blink of an eye, the phantom dragon head swallowed Ling Waxi whole. A succession of deafening booms in its wake. The spectators were stunned into silence by such a frightening combo. From the first golden dragon shocks the heavens to the last, each attack contains terrifying power. Be but that's a one word battle armor master. He's a five ring soul king. Why is he a punching bag for this two ringed kid? Humbled into the air, Ling Watsi's mind was in complete chaos as he fought back numerous concussions. He felt as if his
He lost the very first match of the preliminaries, so he was eliminated from the tournament. What a pity, since this was his final chance to make a name for himself at the Continental Young Elites tournament. The pitiful Ling Waxi lay on the floor, mind blank. He was wholly resigned now. His battle armor melted into light and helped sort out his soul power and his body. Although pain racked through him, it could not compare with the anguish within his heart. I lost. I can't believe I lost. How did this happen? If I had immediately used my battle armor at the start of the match and never let him get close to me, I could have won. A lion uses its full strength to hunt a rabbit. Ling Waxi remembered the lectures of his teacher and regret immediately filled him. He regretted looking down upon Tang Wuling, regretted not even using his fifth soul skill. But no matter how much he wanted to change it, there existed no medicine in this world that could cure regret and no pitiful losers. He lost and was eliminated. He was the loser this time. Tang Wuling panted as he stood tall in the center of the stage. He had faced tremendous pressure throughout the battle as well. The power amplification effect of battle armor was truly formidable. One wrong move and he wouldn't be standing the victor. If not for Golden Dragon shocks the heavens injuring Ling Waxi in the beginning, his follow-up combo wouldn't have been anywhere near as effective. Equipped with battle armor, his opponent wielded strength equal to a seven ring soul master. The odds of a four ring soul master prevailing over a seven ring one was nigh impossible. Even if his body was much stronger, he was glad he didn't lose the first match and lose face. The pride of victory filled him. He also noticed something changed within him. His battle prowess increased after his Deadly combo attacks. The body sex training was fully assimilated into his body now. Had Ling Waxi utilized the full power of his battle armor, Tang Wuling wouldn't have had a chance of winning. Even with Blue Silver Emperor, Gold Song, and the Tyrant Dragon, his defeat would have been set in stone. Tang Wuling jumped off the stage and sprinted to the competitor's waiting area, swift to avoid becoming the center of attention. So strong. Yu Yue whispered into his ear as she rushed to meet him. Tang Wuling turned to her, astonished she had waited there for him. A bitter smile formed on his lips. I've just got heaven to find luck. I hope I don't have another match like that. One word battle armor masters are too damn strong. Chapter 606. Captain, come to my room later. Yu Yue flashed Tang Wuling a smile, but you didn't even use your own battle armor. Zinglin can't make the circuit core yet, so she's going to make more pieces for everyone else first. Your right pauldron should be finished soon. At the sound of those words, Tang Wuling's eyes shone. His first piece of battle armor was his right gauntlet, and next was the right pauldron. Once he had that piece, his entire right arm would be clad in battle armor. Since his golden dragon dread claw was his most powerful attack, it would undoubtedly reach new heights with the pauldron. When that time came, he would have a fighting chance in a full fledged battle against a one word battle armor master. Let's go. Yu Yue said, leading the way. Tang Wuling hastened after her. He had gained insights from the battle and now wanted to ponder upon those insights further. On stage, Ling Waxi finally picked himself off the ground, stumbling like a zombie as he exited. As he slowly removed his battle armor piece by piece, he noticed the deep gashes on his chest plate, deep gashes left by Tang Wuling. He would need a mechanic to repair it, but the cost of repairing a one-word battle armor was sky high. His complexion paled at the thought, his mind growing numb. Do you feel discouraged? Asked an elderly man. Ling Waxi raised his head and said in a hoarse voice, Teacher, the elder walked over to Ling Waxi, slapped him across the face. His cheeks flushed with pain, waking him from his stupor. Do you feel discouraged? The elder asked again, his tone grave. No. Ling Waxi clenched his fists, tears trickling down his face. The elder raised his palm again, and just when Ling Waxi thought the elder was about to slap him once more, the elder pulled him into a hug. Remember this, he said in an unyielding tone. This is a shame that you must carry on for the rest of your life. If you ever want to redeem yourself, then you have to become stronger. You can't make any excuses for this shame. A loss is a loss. Do not fear it. Being eliminated doesn't matter. What matters is that you acknowledge your loss and your weakness. You didn't lose because you didn't bring out your full strength, but because your opponent refused to let you. What you lack is a real combat experience. So, I'm bringing you to Hell Valley. You will train and fight there for the day you can redeem yourself. Once you've washed away this shame, you'll truly have become strong. Teacher. News of a five-ringed, one word battle armor master eliminated in the first round of the preliminary spread like wildfire, but to the dismay of the gossipers, the boy who created this miracle was nowhere to be found. Only a few people knew that his competitor number was 333. Unlike Tang Wuling, the rest of his friends had much weaker opponents, minus those who sat out of the one-on-one -on -one competition, such as Gu Yue and Shulizi. They were all able to pass the first round. However, Tang Wuling's match against a one-word battle armor master served as wake-up call for them. The soul masters on Star Luo were no weaker than those of Duo. In fact, due to their idolization of lone heroes, the people of Star Luo focused on cultivating their strength as individuals far more. Apart from that, Tang Wuling's victory over a one-word battle armor master shocked them. Even Wu Zhangkong's chilly face froze in shock, pride entering his eyes as he gazed upon Tang Wuling. That a four-ring soul master could defeat a one-word battle armor master was simply inconceivable. Captain, come to my room later. Yuzinglin said after finishing her meal in the dining hall. Shishi and Yue's Hengyu stared at Tang Wuling, brows scrunched. The hell are you two looking at? Tang Wuling glared at them. Shu Lizzie gave a goofy smile. Big Sis Yuzinglin invited Captain because his second piece of battle armor is nearly done. Second piece of battle armor. A grin slid its way across Shishi's lips. Then isn't it my turn next? But Shu Lizzie only stared at him with sincere eyes. You. Your turn is last. I still remember that look you gave Wuling just now. I'm gonna tell Big Sis Yuzinglin tomorrow. Lizzie, do you need a spanking? Shishi rolled his sleeves an inch closer to Shu Lizzie. Rising to his feet, Tang Wuling squeezed Shishi's shoulder, keeping him in place. Then turned to Shu Lizzie. You wanna beat him up? Shu Lizzie giggled. Captain, you shouldn't beat people up. Just hold him there and I'll sit on him instead. That's good enough. Which prompted Shishi to groan in complaint. It had been a long time since Tang Wuling obtained his first piece of battle armor, so he understood just how amazing it was to receive his second. He couldn't help but look forward to it. Without any battle armor, he would stand no chance against a battle armor master. Furthermore, it was his dream to become a battle armor master. He had long since chosen the first word for his set, Dragon. Once Tang Wuling completed his one word battle armor set, he could officially grant it this name. There was no doubt in Tang Wuling's mind that his achievements were all thanks to the power of the Golden Dragon King within him. Without it, he would never have possessed his current strength no matter if he doubled, tripled, or even quadrupled his time and effort. That was precisely why his one word battle armor would be named dragon in the future he would add gold into it as well making his two word battle armor golden dragon but that was just the tentative name for now while tang Wuling had been busy gorging himself with dinner shishi and slipped away everyone else had returned to their own rooms as well once he had finished his meal tang Wuling made for yuzinglin's room everything is ready said yuzinglin after inviting him inside i just need to put it all together today she pointed to the item on the table tang Wuling's eyes shone upon laying eyes on it a bare bones pauldron that was carefully linked with a soul circuit to armament for the upper arm Gu Yue's meticulous design allowed for a full range of movements with it equipped tang Wuling himself had forged this incomplete pauldron but the soul circuit had been engraved by yuzinglin with the increase in her cultivation level and understanding of battle armor crafting yuzinglin could smoothly make battle armor step by step instead of in one completing a piece of battle armor all at once truly proved difficult and wouldn't necessarily Produce the best results. Her current process was to first carve the basic soul circuits into the metal, then slowly add more detail and connect them from there. The armor on the table was fully ready except for some finishing touches. Tang Wuling glanced at Yi Zinglin and she nodded, saying, Let's get started then. Prepare yourself. Great. Tang Wuling answered, stepping back from
Shi, and Xu Xiaoyan. Since Xu Lizzi was a support type, he wasn't counted. Gu Yue's true strength still posed as a mystery to Tang Wulin since he had never seen her go all out. He believed her words that she was in the spirit of this realm. Ever since he had met her, he was attracted to her mysterious aura. Chapter 607, Second Piece of Battle Armor. Starlight twinkled in Yu Xingling's hands. She harnessed its power to work her craft upon the battle armor. Although Yu Xingling's battle armor missed the crucial circuit quarter tide altogether, it was still on the verge of completion. Clad in her shining armor, she looked like a goddess incarnate, her vessel as vast as the sea of stars. Specks of starlight shone upon her battle armor, and her star god sword pulsed vibrantly, illuminating the entire room. Starlight flowed from her body onto the incomplete piece of battle armor, filling its engraved soul circuits, then traveled deeply into the soul circuits, expanding and connecting the network. For Mecha Makers, researching the secrets of soul circuits proved a crucial. The more complex the circuit, the greater the difficulty to engrave it. Gu Yue had designed all of the battle armor with special care for its user, and especially so for Tang Wulin. Upon seeing the circuits grow clear on the armor surface, Tang Wulin he felt as if his blood were calling out and yearning for the armor. Compared to the time Yu Xingling had crafted Tang Wulin's first piece of battle armor, currently she proceeded in far more regular manner. Her soul power came out in a steady and solid stream, illustrating her perfect control over it despite the constant drain on her. Not one bit of it was wasted. Thanks to her own battle armor, her soul power was replenishing fairly quickly and the net loss was a mere trickle. She's made so much progress. I can't be slacking now. With that, Tang Wulin resolved himself. Time ticked on. The golden radiance of the battle armor upon the table grew in splendor until it spread through the whole piece. Unlike Tang Wulin's forearm armor with its three blades, the upper armor that was connected to the pauldron was far sleeker and smoother. A complex web of engravings spanned its entire length, up to the attached pauldron. The pauldron itself protruded with three layers stacked atop each other, the outermost layer resembling scales. Tang Wulin's battle style revolved around brute force and rampaging, so the pauldron's design was meant to aid him with intense collisions. With this three-layered pauldron and his terrifying strength, a shot of ash would demolish what it struck. The draconic look of the armor resonated with Tang Wulin. The scale-like rhombus sheets on the surface of the armor were all layered together neatly. It perfectly mimicked the look of his scales when he used golden dragon body. Get ready, Yu Xingling said, jolting Tang Wulin from his thoughts. His mind trembled and he watched, enraptured. Specks of starlight converged to form the core of the soul circuit. The next instant, a wave of energy lashed out following an explosion of light. Tang Wulin stepped forward to the table. With his left hand, he dug his nails into the skin around his right shoulder and upper arm until he drew red. Two streams of blood trickled down onto the armor. Not a moment later, the armor's shine transformed into a shade of pure gold. He grabbed the armor, poured in soul power and blood essence. Starlight blossomed around the back of his right hand, manifesting as his gauntlet. The soul circuits of the two pieces of armor connected and merged. The pauldron let out a cry as it flew into the air, then dived toward his shoulder. Tang Wulin's bloody shoulder grew heavy as the pauldron landed on it in a perfect fit. It wrapped itself around his upper arm and shoulder in a swirl of movement, linking together with his gauntlet. Immediately, the two worked together in harmony. Blood essence and soul power rolled within Tang Wulin. The piece of battle armor was complete now. Now linked with his blood, soul power flooded into it, connecting every node within the armor. As Tang Wulin's body harmonized with the new piece of battle armor, his scales shone with increased intensity. Yu Xingling stood to the side, watching as Tang Wulin equipped his right arm fully with battle armor. She nodded in satisfaction. The process proved successful, and now Tang Wulin's aura was even stronger. When Yu Xingling had first met Tang Wulin, she regarded him as beneath her. Not even worth staring a glance. Having come from Shrek Academy, she had held the mindset that only the greatest of geniuses were worthy of her attention. However, when they met again later, his tenacity and tireless efforts left a deep impression on her. The scene of him recklessly sacrificing himself to protect his comrades was seared into her memory most of all. A comrade? No, a friend like this was absolutely worthy of trust. He was someone she could trust her back to. The golden light around Tang Wulin gradually dimmed. He flexed his arm and moved it around a bit. A huge grin on his face. He could feel explosive power bursting within his arms. He opened his hand and transformed it into a claw. The claw perfectly fit into the armor and transformed into a weapon of slaughter. Without Tang Wulin even urging his soul power, a faint golden edge stretched out three inches from his claw. It was due to the keen edge of his golden dragon claw that Tang Wulin had been able to defeat Ling Waxi. Without it, he wouldn't have been able to create such deep gashes in Ling Waxi's battle armor. The dragon claw's crushing effect was growing stronger along with him. He shifted his gaze to his left hand, pondered. With the current number of golden dragon king seals he had broken, his right arm, shoulders, and chest would be covered in golden scales. If he broke more seals, then the transformation would likely extend to his left arm as well. When that happened, his left hand would probably be able to transform into a claw like his right. Once he gained a second claw, his strength would increase by leaps and bounds. If he desired, he could break the fifth seal right now, but he wanted to delay doing that and buy himself more time for the later seals. However, now that he had gained another piece of battle armor, Tang Wulin's thirst for power reappeared. He couldn't help but feel tempted to break the fifth seal immediately. How do you feel? Yi Xingling asked. Tang Wulin smiled. Amazing. It's perfect. The starlight faded from the room as the battle armor melted into Tang Wulin's body, settling into his right shoulder. The greatest benefit of using spirit alloys to craft one-word battle armor was that, as long as its foundation was strong, it could be upgraded into two-word battle armor in the future. Furthermore, he wouldn't have to store it in a storage cell device. With it fused into his body, he could equip it and unequip it in an instant. Zinglin, thank you. I'm going to go then. Tang Wulin said, Wulin, is you all right? Tang Wulin was taken aback by her words, staring blankly at Yi Zinglin for a moment. Huh? Do you know something I don't? Yi Zinglin furrowed her brow. It looks to me that she's been in a bad mood lately. I often see her staring blankly into the air. I have no idea what's going on in her mind. Maybe she's having regrets about joining the spirit pagoda since she can't become one of the Shrek Seven monsters now. When you're not busy, spend some time with her. We can all tell she treats you specially. Okay. Tang Wulin nodded. A soft sigh escaped his lips. I don't know what she's thinking either, but she promised me that she'll at least enter the inner court with us. Really though, so what if she's part of the spirit pagoda? We still need to graduate together. Afterward, no matter where we end up, as long as we remember our bond of friendship, the years we spent growing up together, then nothing else matters. Soul technology is so advanced nowadays anyway. We'll easily be able to call and visit each other. Don't worry. I'll talk with her and straighten her out. That's good then. Yi Zingling nodded. What about you then? What are your plans for the future? Are you going to stay at Shrek forever? Chapter 608. Growing old with you. Tang Wulin shook his head. Probably not. I'm planning on enlisting in the military in the future. It's been my plan to enlist after graduating from the inner court for a long time now. The military? Yi Zingling's eyes widened. I heard from Lizzie before, but I didn't think it was really true. Is enlisting better than cultivating at Shrek? Tang Wulin smiled. It's my goal, so I'm going to do it just like how Gu Yue became a member of the Spirit Pagoda. We all have our own goals. What about you? Are you really going to stay at Shrek? Yi Zingling nodded. I don't like dealing with politics and whatnot of the outside world. Staying at the academy suits me best. Lizzie's planning on staying too. He said he'd keep me company. A warm smile graced her lips. That's good. Just think, how much will we have changed 10 years from now? When we think back on this time, we'll probably smile fondly on the memories. Yi Zingling grinned. You're right. Maybe we will. All right. Enough of that. You can go on now. I need to cultivate. Tang Wulin exited Yi Zingling's
stared at him speechless. Tang Wuling stood up and walked over to her. Then he bent down onto one knee and put the slipper back at back on her slipper less foot. He stood back up and rubbed the top of her head. Oh my. Your hair is a mess now, bastard. Hu Yue glared at him, absolutely fuming with rage. Nighty night. Tang Wuling said, patting her on the head again, then left. She did nothing to stop him. Hu Yue stood there, mulling in her emotions without bothering to fix her hair. Many long moments later, she walked over to the table and grabbed the cup Tang Wuling drank from. She filled it up and downed it all in one gulp. The greatest happiness is growing old with you. Her eyes grew misty. The first round of the one-on-one -on -one tournament spanned three days. It was three days of regret and rejoice. The stadium was absolutely packed with spectators and competitors, but the Stalu officials were masterful organizers and everything went smoothly. After the first round of the one-on-one -on -one competition came the two on twos, the team battles, and finally the mega competition. Compared to the duels, the matches of the other competition categories had far less people. According to the tournament's planning, the first round of each of the remaining competitions would finish in one day. Then later on, when the competitors were greatly reduced, they could cram all the non-duels into one day. Morning broke and Tang Wuling quickly washed up. Then he went to invite Yu Yue for breakfast. When she greeted him that morning, her smile was clearly brighter than in the past few days. Whatever that was weighing on her mind gone. It was as if she was a ball of sunshine. Throughout breakfast, Tang Wuling couldn't help but sneak glances at her. What are you looking at? Hu Yue said, rolling her eyes at him. Tang Wuling smiled wryly. I don't know. You just seem a bit different today. Are you regretting not participating in the one-on-one -on -one competition? Hu Yue snorted. I didn't participate because I didn't want you to have to face me. If we fought, you wouldn't end up with a good ranking. Why are you so confident? Tang Wuling grumbled. How are you so certain you would defeat me? Strength, Hu Yue answered nonchalantly. I don't believe it. Let's spar some time. Tang Wuling beamed. Hu Yue scoffed at him, then smirked. At that moment, the rest of their friends arrived in the dining hall. Yi Zingling took her seat beside Hu Yue. When she saw the smile on Hu Yue's face, she couldn't help but send Tang Wuling a meaningful look, a smile forming on her own mouth as well. Today are the duos. Don't get careless, guys. I encountered a soul king yesterday. We can't underestimate the soul masters of Star Luo. They're stronger than I expected, Tang Wuling said. She she puffed his chest out confidently. It doesn't matter how strong they are. We're aiming for the championship of the duos competition. Yuan and Yui glared at him. Shut up. She she scratched his cheek in embarrassment, but I didn't say anything wrong. We are aiming for the championship, aren't we? Even so, you don't have the right to say it out loud. The weak shouldn't try to show off. Yuan and Yui said. She she was dumbfounded. How am I weak? Yuan and Yui said. Which of us can you beat? Without the slightest hesitation, she she pointed to Shu Lizzie. I can beat Lizzie. There's no way he can beat me. I think I could take Shaolin too. Jeez. When are you going to grow up? Why are you comparing yourself to a support type and a control type? Yuan and Yui said in disdain, barely keeping herself from smacking him away. She she smirked. Don't worry, there will come a day where I'm more powerful than you. Anyway, we can't be sure if any of us will meet any strong opponents today. Well, I'll only be able to display my full strength against a strong opponent. Yuan Yui scoffed at him. Tang Wuling said, You damn jinx. Shut your mouth right now before you curse us all. What? Captain, you're not going to back me up here. Yuan is looking down on me. She she said. Tang Wu gazed at him with eyes of indifference. Then you should prove her wrong. Otherwise, quit your complaining. All eight of them were competing in the two on two competition. The teams were Tang Wu and Gu Yue, Yuan and Yui, and Shi Shi, Shu Xiaolan, and Yue Sheng Yu, and Yi Zingling and Shu Lizi. It was hard to say how the strength of the pairs ranked relative to the others since they rarely sparred against each other in pairs. However, Tang Wu and Gu Yue had defeated Yuan and Yui and Yue Sheng Yu before, so they were viewed as the strongest pair thus far. After finishing their breakfast, they left the dining hall and headed to the stadium together. Wu Zhangong didn't leave them there since he left earlier. The government officials had arranged a special viewing box for the group from Shrek Academy. During the one on one competition, Wu Zhangong had actually only watched Tang Wu match, then left before the rest of them fought. For today's two on two matches, all eight of them would be battling. As the teacher responsible for this group, Wu Zhangong was present to watch. Shrek Academy students were particularly outstanding even among geniuses. Once they reached a certain cultivation level, they each would choose their own path to walk down. Once this time came, the teacher's role was mainly to help them not stray onto inappropriate paths and provide guidance. There was no need for the teachers to intervene in every little matter of the student's cultivation now. It was more important to help the student craft a personalized cultivation plan to become a great soul master and battle armor master. As a result of this, Wu Zhangong rarely advised them directly anymore. His guidance mainly came in the form of combat training and helping his students correct their weaknesses. Tang Wuling and his friends walked into the competitor's area, although quite a few people witnessed his miraculous victory over the Soul King on the first day. Because he had disappeared so quickly and a couple days had passed now, no one paid much attention to him. The competitor's area was absolutely packed. When Tang Wuling's group arrived, there were no seats left. The eight of them resigned themselves to find a corner to wait for their matches. As he waited in the corner, Tang Wuling checked out the other competitors. Due to the restriction that competitors had to be 20 years old or younger, most competitors were at least 18 years old. Some burned with excitement, others clenched their fists nervously, while a few sat down and unperturbed. He could roughly gauge their strengths by how they acted. Chapter 609, Yuan and Yui and Shi Shi. The status of the two on two matches were much larger than those for the one on one matches. The stadium managed to fit about 15 of these larger arenas. As a result, 15 pairs of numbers were called at a time, and the matchups were displayed on a large soul screen. The moment each time arrived, they would go over to the screens and figure out when their match was and who their opponents were. Tang Wuling and Gu Yue were team number 116, while the rest of their friends were numbered 117 to 119 consecutively since they had registered at the same time. Due to this, it was highly unlikely they would be matched against each other. The Star Luo Empire had pulled some strings precisely for this. Tang Wuling and Gu Yue's opponents were team 69, but they were the first of the Shrek Academy group to fight. Surprisingly, Yuan and Yui and Shishi's team had the very first match of the competition. Just wait and see our triumphant return. Shishi said, clenching his fists tight. Yuan and Yui rolled her eyes and pushed him forward. Hurry up. You can brag after we win. They couldn't help but smile at how whipped and helpless she was when he faced Yuan and Yui. They all knew he liked her, but she didn't hold back any of her punches when it came to him. They had a hot and cold relationship, almost as if walking on a tie rope filled with subtleties. It was a wonder if Wu Zhangong had deliberately paired the two of them up. An assault type and agility type pairing were one of the classic duos. Yuan and Yui strode forward, dressed in men's clothing as usual. Shishi eagerly followed behind her. Yuan and, what's the battle plan? She she asked, bursting with excitement that he was fighting side by side with her. Yuan and Yui shot a look at him. Just don't drag me down. She she stared at her in shock. Am I really that weak? Yes. While they bantered, walked into the stadium. In this gigantic stadium, they could instantly feel countless gazes focus on them. A tsunami of cheering erupted, nearly frightening Shishi out of his shoes. Under the guidance of the staff members, they walked over to their stage. Their opponents were already on the stage waiting for them. Similar to them, the opponent team was one girl and one boy. Both looked to be nearly 20 years old and clearly had a more mature air around them than Yuan and Yui and Shishi. You must not deliberately use fatal attacks during the match. Mechas are not permitted. Once one side surrenders, the other side must stop attacking. When I have determined the outcome of the battle, the match must stop immediately, the referee declared. Based on these rules alone, it was clear that tournaments had far laxer rules in Star Luo than in Duo. This was because they wanted
The referee declared, thus began the first duo battle for the group from Trek Academy. Of their two opponents, the young man stepped forward and summoned his martial soul. Four soul rings appeared, two yellow and two purple, a fairly standard configuration. In the same instant, he rapidly grew from average in height to a three-meter-tall giant with bulging muscles. Brownish yellow fur grew on his body as an aura of power burst from his body. A bear type martial soul? That's probably the Ironback bear. Shishi and Yuan and we both identified the man's martial soul in an instant. As top students of Shrek Academy, it was only natural for them to be able to identify virtually any martial soul they encountered. The girl behind the Ironback bear soul master summoned her martial soul as well. Two yellow and two purple soul rings rose up. Her blonde hair grew longer, but her body didn't transform as the man's did. Instead, her eyes enlarged and a tail grew out behind her. Surprisingly, the four soul rings coil around her tail. What kind of martial soul is that? Shishi and Yuan and we were taken Back. It was rare for them to not be able to identify a martial soul. The Ironback Bear Soul Master roared at the sky. His first soul ring shining as his fur gained a metallic gloss to it. His back swelled with power as he charged at Yuan and Yui and Shishi. Shishi dodged to the side. Although his movements weren't particularly quick, he evaded like a ghost, naturally winding around the Bear Soul Master. At that moment, the female Soul Master with the tail giggled. Shishi's mind went numb and he stumbled mid-step. The Bear Soul Master and the tailed Soul Master clearly possessed superb teamwork. The moment Shishi stumbled, the Bear Soul Master charged at him with shocking agility. There was no doubt the tailed Soul Master had controlled hype to have created such an opening. At the same time, Yuan and Yui rushed forward, but she was too far to save Shishi. However, she didn't seem to have any intent of saving him anyway. She didn't prepare her air cannons either. As Shishi stumbled, the Bear Soul Master was upon him in an instant, bracing his shoulder. The Bear Soul Master slamming into Shishi. His shoulder swelling into a boulder the instant it struck. But strangely, she took the hit like a boneless rag doll. It was almost as if he was welcoming the strike. At that instant, four soul rings rose around him and he gripped his light dragon dagger in reverse. Gone was his smile, an ice cold mask in its place. An ill premonition struck the bear soul master when he saw Shishi's face. In a blur of movement, Shishi moved to the bear soul master's side, as if he were a ghost. Then he slashed up from the bear soul master's armpit. Although his movements had been simple, he had executed them with insane speed and fluidity. He was like the floating clouds and flowing water. The instant the light dragon dagger made contact, its shine retracted and it took on a dark cold hue. There was neither the sound of air being sliced nor any soul power leaking out, or even any signs of a soul skill being used. But this simple attack was enough to fluster the bear soul master. In a panic, he leaned to the side and smashed down at the dagger with his right elbow. The defining trait of the ironback bear was its body, which was tough as iron. Its entire body was practically a weapon. Just as the elbow was about to smash into the dagger, the dagger disappeared. In another flicker of motion, Shishi appeared behind the bear soul master. Joy flashed in the bear soul master's eyes. His martial soul wasn't called the iron back bear for no reason. His defense was the strongest on his back. He exploded into an arch with his back. As long as Shishi was behind him, he would hit with his iron back, which had the property of sending tremors its way over its struck. An agility type soul master afflicted with tremors was basically as good as finished, but he didn't hit anything. Then he fell a stinging between his ribs right where his elbow had been and he shouted in alarm. Chapter 610 The Art of Agility. Hot pain rapidly spread throughout the bear soul master's whole body and he went stiff. In the eyes of the spectators, the exchange had happened in the blink of an eye. Only those who had been keenly watching were in awe by how artful Shishi's technique was. He was like a wisp of smoke dancing in the wind as he slid about, repositioning multiple times within a second to misdirect the bear soul master and stab him from where he least expected. He was like a ghost with how he weaved in and out. The instant Shishi's dagger stabbed into the bear soul master's ribs, he jumped overhead and slashed at the nape. The light dragon dagger lightly brushed against the bear soul master's neck. Then he collapsed onto the floor. His central nervous system had been pricked, instantly depriving him of control over his body. The tailed soul master was far too slow to react to any of this. Her first soul skill was spirit disturbance. It wasn't a particularly powerful control skill, but it had always been effective when cooperating with her brother. She had never expected Shishi to overcome it so easily. Shishi had learned the purple demon eyes and possessed strong spiritual power as a result. So when faced with spiritual attacks, he only needed a split second to recover. Furthermore, he possessed swift reaction times as an agility type. A boom thundered in the air as Yuan and Yui used her second soul skill. A cannon, without even transforming, a blast of air exploded toward the tailed soul master. The tailed soul master flipped its tail and light blossoms to greet the air blasts. But Yuan and Yui's air cannon was not so weak as to be blocked by a that and easily penetrated the impromptu defense. The fist sized blasts of air exploded, sending the tailed soul master flying through the air. She had instantly fainted. Although much had happened during the battle, it had concluded in a mere ten or so seconds. They were all four ring soul masters, yet Yuan and Yui and Shishi dominated the battle. Countless officials of the Star Luo Empire were paying close attention now. The general audience may not know of these two's background, but the officials did. Your Majesty, those two students from Shrek Academy are extraordinary, exclaimed one of the elders by the Emperor's side. Dai Tianling slowly nodded. How do you think they compare with our students at Monster Academy? The elder furrowed his brow, hesitant. If they're the same age, then it'd be hard to say. Dai Tianling glanced at him. He knew this elder well, and if he spoke with such caution, then that certainly wasn't a good sign. The elder continued, but the competition is restricted to those twenty years old or younger. We shouldn't have a problem defeating them. We'll need to keep a close eye on them, though. From what I saw earlier, that agility type should be the stronger of the pair. His speed, explosive power, battlefield control, and even his spiritual power are impressive. If they didn't lie about his age on the registration form, then he's only fifteen years old. He's definitely a genius. But apart from those aspects, he lacks the ability of an assault type to be a star team member. We need to watch out for if his martial soul has any unique abilities. Dai Tianling smiled. We invited Trek Academy to the tournament this year to make things more exciting. If our youngsters can defeat them, then we'll need to make a big press release about it. Just imagine if they defeat Dulo's legendary Shrek Academy. And if we don't manage to beat them, make sure to suppress and downplay news about defeat. We need to avoid discouraging our youngsters. Understood. Meanwhile, Shishi and Yuan and Yui left the stage and left for the waiting area for competitors. Shishi's serious expression was gone now, replaced by a proud smile as he puffed out his chest. If you keep strutting around like that, I'm going to beat your ass. Yuan and Yui said, taking a few steps to distance herself from him. Shishi sniggered, aren't I awesome? Come on, tell me. I'm awesome, right? I was leading that guy around by his nose. He didn't even see me coming. Shut up. What? Are you saying I wasn't great? Did you see my moves? I was so cool. Ow. Yuan and Yui suddenly turned around and punched him in the stomach, silencing his boasting. Then she hastened back to the waiting area. A thin smile formed on Shishi's lips. He had grown stronger. There were countless soul springs littered around the area, and they were all showing replays of the previous battle. When the two returned to the waiting area, the other competitors looked at them differently than before. As the first set of 15 matches for the preliminaries proceeded, they were the first ones to win. Shishi's skill in close quarters combat was shocking. He hadn't used a single soul skill during the battle, yet he easily took down an assault type soul master at the same ring level. Anyone with a decent, I could tell that the Ironback Bear Soul Master hadn't been able to bring out his full strength, but Shishi still dominated artful techniques on par with soul skills. Tang Wolin high fived Shishi and Yuan and Yui as they returned, but he didn't make a big show of celebration. His expression was wooden, completely unreadable. Tang Wolin glanced at the listings for the next set of matches. He and Gu Yue were up next. He nudged her with his elbow. What do I do? I'm getting a bit nervous. Are you
Combined with their light banter and Shishi and Yuan and Yui's amazing performance, countless people had now taken notice of their group. The other competitors had seen them all arrive together, and since neither Shishi nor Yuan and Yui seemed to be the leader of the group, they could only wonder how strong the other team members were. A few recognized Tang Wulin, and so word of his stunning victory over a one-word battle armor master quickly spread. The matches passed by quickly, even faster than the duels of the previous days. It usually only took a single all-out clash for the battles to be decided. Soon, Tang Wulin and Yu Yue's match came. The two of them walked through the long corridor leading to the competition grounds together, and when they passed through, they were enveloped in an electric air of excitement. Tang Wulin turned to Yu Yue and said, "The crowds here in Star Luo are really energetic. It's a lot more fun compared to how serious things are taken back home. Sometimes you gotta let out all your passion for battle." Gu Yue grunted her acknowledgement. When the battle starts, I'll charge them and you just back me up, okay? I've got this, Tang Wuling said, smiling. Thanks so much for watching this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. Also leave a comment down below with suggestions on what novels to read.